funny, Mr. Taylor, how you enjoy sleeping in Harry's back room. No windows, no air, no heat. No charge. No complaints. <laughs> you know, that's where I sleep when I tell Dolores I'm visiting my sister. I didn't know you had a sister. I don't. <laughs> I won't be staying long. I just need a little time to put some things together, then I'm back on my feet. Oh, man, it's my brother. Hey, remember, not a word to him about me staying back there. Why do you guys always act like I'm a moron? <laughs> I'll explain later when I have time to talk really slow. <laughs> Morning, guys. Hey, Marty. Hey, Tim. Uh, can't talk. New job. Gotta go. Call me later. What's his new job? He's working out at Stu's fish market, devaning shrimp. <laughs> Why is his hair all wet? Uh, sometimes they fight back. <laughs> no, no, no. He's, he's helping me test out some of those new high-powered shower heads, the Benford 6100. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a great thing. You switch over to Pulse, it'll blow the hair right off your legs. <laughs> oh, by the way, Harry, uh, when do you want me for Thanksgiving? I don't want you at all, but if you have to be there, be there too. <laughs> great, now bum a ride with Marty. Marty? Marty's taking his family to your house for Thanksgiving? No, just Marty. Dolores frightens the children. <laughs> Our family always spends Thanksgiving together. Now Marty's going to your house for Thanksgiving? He's taking a shower in the hardware store? Guys, what's up? I'm not at liberty to say. There's a donut in it for you. <laughs> Marty and Nancy split up and Marty's sleeping at the store. <laughs> trouble, but how did it come to this? Well, in my view, Nancy projected repressed paternal conflicts onto the relationship. <laughs> well, Marty was still grappling with intimacy issues. <laughs> you watch too much Oprah. <laughs> Why is he telling Benny this stuff and not me? Because Marty feels like he's hit rock bottom. Then when he sees Benny, he remembers what rock bottom really looks like. <laughs> Thanksgiving meal to Randy in Costa Rica. He can run, but he just can't hide. <laughs> I didn't cook it. I bought it. Yeah, but he really has something to be thankful for. <laughs> Very funny. How's your day? Not so good. You know that Marty is uh, sleeping at the hardware store? Uh, so you're jealous Harry didn't ask you first? <laughs> I'm serious. He and Nancy have split up. Oh, no. What did he say? I had to learn this from Benny. Why wouldn't Marty bring this information to me? Well, he's afraid you're going to criticize him. Remember the last time when Marty and Nancy were fighting? I was totally supportive. You called him a gutless loser. <laughs> In a very supportive way. <laughs> Honey, if you want to help your brother, you have to realize this is going to be a very tough time for him. You have to bend over backwards. You have to be supportive. You have to be non-judgmental. You gotta be supportive and non-judgmental. But he gets to stay in a hardware store. Where's the justice in that? Oh. Hey, Tim. Hey, Marty. Whew. Glad you're open. <laughs> now I don't have to go downtown to score that bag of wood screws. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Harry's been looking for a night watchman, you know, and I mean, I'm just kind of giving him a hand. Intimidating uniform. <laughs> Should have seen me before I put the shorts on. <laughs> I 
I know about you, Nancy. Then he sold the island. Free sandwich? <laughs> Fresh donut. <laughs> Is there any way you guys can work this out? Uh, I don't think so. You know, we went into counseling and tried to fix the marriage, but... Uh, we both realized we were just looking for a way out. This is gonna be really hard on you and the kids. Yeah. Marriage hasn't worked for a long time. She thought I didn't make enough money. She said I wasn't ambitious enough. Come on, Marty, that's ridiculous. I know. I mean, I think I do pretty good for myself, don't you? Yeah. Well, you're young, you're smart, you're talented, you're... eating peanut butter with a putty knife. <laughs> She got great legs. <laughs> Have you had a chance to talk to the girls? Uh, a little bit, you know. I mean, Nancy gets them one week. I'm supposed to get them the next. Obviously, I can't bring them here. Why don't you just call me? You could have stayed at my place. No, I, I, I didn't want to impose. You're not imposing your family. You know, with Randy out of the country, we got a spare room. I mean, you can stay there right now. That'd be great. Yeah, when you get the girls, they can stay there, too. Really? Yeah. Uh, uh, you think Jill will be okay with it? Yeah, sure. There's nothing more important to Jill than family. And we want you to spend Thanksgiving with us at Mom's. But you got to put some pants on. <laughs> you guys are the best. Well, I'll meet you at my house. Thanks, man. You bet. Ah, but it must be great to spend the night with all these tools, huh? <laughs> Waking up with the fresh smell of solvents. A rack of ball cocks. <laughs> Why dream, you know? Jill's never gonna toss me out. Yeah. Hi, guys. Oh, hi. Oh, that smells great. Oh, thank you. Well, have you know, I uh, talked to Marty. He's very supportive. I told him we'd do anything we could to help him. I knew you had it in you. He'd be real proud of me. I reminded him that he's family, and he might as well just stay at our house. You told Marty that he could live here? With us? <laughs> well, just until he gets steady work and gets back on his feet. When was the last time Uncle Marty had a steady job? <laughs> I don't even think we were born yet. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. He's had a great job now. He's going to be huge in shrimp. I think it's a big problem to have another person here. He could sleep in Randy's room. Well, actually, it might be better if he stayed in Brad's room. <clears throat> wait, wait, my room? Well, because the girls would like to be close to their father and they'd have to stay in Mark's room. <laughs> my room? The girls? Well, he gets the girls every other week, so I said that they could stay here, too. <laughs> okay, where am I supposed to sleep? Randy's room. Then where am I supposed to sleep? Randy's room. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Don't we get any say in this? Brad, Marty is family. When family's in trouble, we gotta pull together. Dad, I'm family, okay? And I don't like the thought of sleeping in a room with Mark. <laughs> Dude, you got a bad. I gotta stay with you. Yeah! Look, just let me talk to your dad for a minute, okay? Yeah, yeah, this really sucks. Don't talk to your father like that. This really sucks. <laughs> you know, I love those girls, and I love Marty, but how could you invite three people to live here without even talking to me, without talking to the boys? I couldn't help it. It just happened. <sighs> you said bend over backwards. Well, if I bend over any further backwards, I'm going to be staring myself in the butt. <laughs> I was just trying to be sensitive. Well, you have to be sensitive to us, too. This is an enormous change. Three people moving in with us, turning our lives upside down. We can handle this. No, we... When, when it comes to handling things like this, we means me. Honey, that's just with our children. <laughs> I can't agree to this until we work out the details. I've worked out all the details. Really? Really? Okay. Who is going to watch those girls when Marty is working? Don't know. Are the boys going to get to move back in their rooms when the girls aren't here? Don't know. 
Do you even know when they're going to be moving in? Until Dad puts in the bunk bed, I'm lending you my good sleeping bag. In other words, you get the bed. Yeah, of course. The older brother always gets the bed. It's not fair. Okay, stronger brother, better looking brother. Hey, I've got a million of them. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm smarter. And how come you're sleeping on the floor? I still can't believe Mom and Dad are kicking us out of our own rooms. I know. Just because Uncle Marty's life is messed up doesn't mean ours has to be. We should stand up for our rights. Hey, guys. I want to say something. Wait, let me guess. You've got the cats moving in, too, right? <laughs> uh, no, actually, I want to say thanks. I know you got to hate being shuffled around. I just... I really appreciate your putting up with us. Well, other families, kids might not be so understanding. Yeah, we're just givers. So, uh, does that mean I get the bed? No freaking way. <laughs> Daddy! Well, honey, what are you doing? What are you up? I had a bad dream. Oh, I'm so sorry. You want me to come up and read you a story? Okay. Okay. Good night, Brad. Good night, Claire. Good night, Mark. Good night. I think we made a statement. <laughs> Girls, how come you're not eating your pancakes? They're not like mom's. I use the same recipe as mom. How come they don't taste the same? Look, I, I don't have time for this, okay? It doesn't matter if they don't taste the same. You gotta eat them anyway, okay? Besides, your dad forgot the secret ingredient he always puts on pancakes, remember? Chocolate chips. Makes starchy little animals. Look at that. You got the Dalmatians, huh? Look at this. What do you got there? Oh, it's an alien with zits. Look at that. Cool. Thanks, Uncle Tim. Thanks, man. You're a lifesaver. You bet. Okay. Kids, I got to go to work. I'll see you later, okay? What are you doing today? Uh, Tim got me some handyman work in Ferndale. Hey, you sure you don't mind driving the girls to school? No, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, thanks. Okay. Oh, man. I forgot to make their lunch. I got up early. I'm in it myself. I know just what they want. You got the Spam and Squid sandwiches, right? <laughs> you guys are unbelievable. I mean, how am I going to repay you? Your watch. <laughs> go on, go on. Have a good day, Marty. I am so impressed with you. I've been working with chocolate chips for years. <laughs> Here, I thought I was going to have to do all the work, and you're just taking charge. I love taking charge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mommy used to kiss Daddy like that. Well, she doesn't do it very often. <laughs> I thought that was a children's book. Oh. The Secret Garden is a children's book. You had My Secret Garden. <laughs> I don't even want you to read that book. <laughs> hey, guys. Marty. Marty, you want some uh, pie? Yeah. Thanks. Sorry I'm late. I was working overtime. Girls give you any trouble? Nope. No, they were angels. I helped them with their homework. Mm. Then I corrected it. <laughs> then we put them to bed. Sounds like you guys didn't miss a beat. Listen, I'm going to go upstairs. They can never seem to fall asleep unless I read them a story first. Already done. They're sound asleep. I'm sorry. Oh, no. No, it's... That's great. I ended up reading the Al Unser story. <laughs> Now let's talk about the inside of your house. Let's say you have an interior wall that you want to spruce up and make it a little more fun. That's right. If you want to cover a dull, unattractive surface, sponge painting is a great option. Or you could grow a beard. <laughs> to begin with, all you actually need is a latex, paint glaze mix, a sea sponge. Sea sponge. 
It's a fun project that kids would enjoy trying to spruce up their own rooms to show you how much fun it would be for children. I invited two kids on the show today, my nieces, Claire and Gracie Taylor. Okay, girls, are you ready to paint? Yeah, okay. All right, before we do that, I want you to look at the camera and tell the audience out there what Uncle Tim says whenever he starts a project. Now that hurts. <laughs> Come on, what's he say? Call 911. Uh, <laughs> what did I say backstage? Al, your mom's fat. <laughs> You girls are doing a great job. Thanks, Al. And I don't think your mom's fat. <laughs> Harry, you got some joint compound? Come look, your, your girls are on TV. You're kidding. Well, girls, I love your work. Boy, Tim is great with those kids. Tom's cheese with half a calorie. <laughs> yeah, he sure is. <laughs> now, if Marty's not coming to your house for Thanksgiving, who's going to give me a ride? I'll have my sister pick you up. <laughs> Run towards the honeypot. Come on, come on. Look up, you got so much to live for. Don't choke him, shock him. Oh, good idea. Clear. Good. Do you have an eight? Old maid. <laughs> I hate that term. It is so old fashioned. You know, women today don't need to be with a man to feel completely fulfilled. You're just mad because you lost. <laughs> hey, Marty. Daddy. Hi. Come here. Hey, um, can you two kids go upstairs for a minute? I need to talk to your Uncle Tim and Aunt Jill. Okay. Um, so, what's going on? Well, first, I, I want to say thanks for everything, but we don't want to impose anymore. Um, I'm going to move the girls back in with their mom. You don't have to do that. We love having you here. We, we don't want to overstay our welcome. You're not overstaying your welcome. Well, I think it's a problem. <laughs> really, it's not a problem. Yeah, but it is with me, okay? So I, I'm going to go upstairs, and I'm going to pack their bags. Marty, you don't have any place else to go. Well, then I'll figure something out. What's that all about? Well, obviously, something about them being here is bothering you. Well, I don't want to figure it out. I've been over backwards for him. I've been sensitive. I've changed my whole personality. <laughs> and we were all very grateful for that. <laughs> I'm worried about the girls. How are they going to feel? You know, about having to move out of here so suddenly. I, I think you should go talk to Marty. I'm tired of fixing things for him. And I'm tired of talking with him. Well, what are you going to say to him at Thanksgiving at your mom's? What I say every year. You touch that drumstick, you're going to lose a hand. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, Marty. Yeah, you too, Tim. We miss you, Mom, so she made you a little care package. Oh, thanks. I uh, already have some. Hope you got the one with the dehydrated pumpkin pie. Mm-mm, good. <laughs> the way you ran out of my house, I didn't want to come talk to you, but Mom said it's Thanksgiving that we should just clear the air. Look, I I'm not really comfortable talking about this, okay? Oh, yeah, right. Like, I'm real comfortable talking about another man's feelings. <laughs> What's going on with you? There's nothing going on with me, okay? That's the point. Work 60 hours a week. All I got to show for it's a case of shrimp forks. <laughs> You're going through a rough stretch, that's all. Oh, I've been going through a rough stretch for 33 years. I mean, come on. I, I've worked with so many jerks over the years, I'm lucky I don't have a chip on my shoulder. <laughs> You'll probably get your hands full of that bug up your butt. <laughs> okay, so I'm a little bitter. I mean, it's easy for you to say. You've always been successful. Easy for me to say? Martin, how about when Dad died? Was it easy for me taking care of everybody? How about working two jobs to get through college? How about raising three kids and a junior salesman's salary, okay. huh? Oh, well, obviously you can handle it, and I can't. That's not what I was saying. No, no, you're what? more successful at your I marriage. Saying that, you're more Martin. successful at your career. Martin. Martin. Now I find out you're better at raising my kids. Is that what this is about, Marty? Come on, it's always easier raising somebody else's kids. You know, when Claire and Gracie see you and Nancy, they see a couple in pain. And they see me and Jill, they see a guy shocking the stuffing out of a teddy bear and a bitter old maid. 
Nancy was right, you know? I said, I'm never going to get back on my feet. I'm just going to go from one stupid job to the next. Not stupid jobs when, when, you're, when you're using the money to support your family. You should be proud of that. This is a time when a lot of guys just cut and run. You're facing responsibilities. That's something to be admired, and I admire that. Come on, let's eat something. Mom made a nice plate for you. Huh? You brought the drumstick. That's right. And the wing for you. <laughs> well, you're right. Your house is freezing cold. Well, I think the pilot light went off in my furnace. Would you mind going down to the basement and taking a look? Well, yeah, but, uh, you know, you could do this yourself. Well, I don't like to go down there. It's big and it's damp. The place gives me the creeps. Love basements. Love the creeps. <laughs> there it is, Wilson. I found your furnace. You got a light down here or something? There should be a pole chain right over the furnace. Ah. Uh. Nah. <laughs> Interesting. You know, Wilson, if you were to drop the ceiling just to scope, you'd have a heck of a rec room down here. <laughs> Foosball table, ping pong, the whole, the whole nine yards. <laughs> Look what happened to them. <laughs> Guys, look, let me just 